This is your life, Jackie Brown. Gold educated and forced to live on the other side of town. This is your daughter, Jackie Brown. This pretty little girl in a worn out clothes that have been hand me down. This is your wife, Jackie Brown, with sad blue eyes walking on eggshells so you don't see her friend. This is your family, Jack Brown. Give a vacation in on a mountain stream. And giving the world more than it gave you. But ugly truths, freedom can bring. And it hasn't been very kind to you. Jackie Burn This is your me Jackie Brown Barely enough I've seen people through More than this hour This is your home, Jack Brown This three-room shed With no running water And the bathroom out there your grave, Jackie Brown, this little piece of limestone that says another desperate man took himself out, this is your dream, Jackie Brown, going nowhere and nowhere fast, we shame ourselves to watch people like this live But who gives a damn about Jackie Brown Just another lazy man Couldn't take what was his One hell of a life Jackie Brown Forevermore Jackie Brown Amen and amen, Jackie Bird. John Mellencamp embarked on a theater tour in the fall of 2010, which continues now into 2011. The opening act is the film that we spoke of earlier called It's About You, which really chronicles the making of the album No Better Than This, and your tour with Bob Dylan and Willie Nelson of last year, uh, 2009. Tell me about the sets, because I think this is pretty interesting. You do three different sets during the show. Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Um, there was light. No. <laughs> uh, there was uh, the film actually is is not really chronicling is that the right word uh the film is actually about a photographer named kurt marcus mm. who him and his son uh are making a film about me but it's really about them trying to make the film Turn he was that. able yes what he was able to you know photograph and a film and his impression of America uh, which I think is the, is the most interesting part of the film uh, because he's driving into St. Louis and he goes 
We're driving into St. Louis, it's July 3rd, and what looks to be prosperity from a distance when you get inside. He says, I wonder what this is going to look like in 50 years mm. when these big cities uh, take on the same patina as small town America. Uh, so, you know, and he has a wonderful line. He says, the demise of America is massive in scope. And we always thought there would be a leveling out of the world. And of course, America would be at the top. Hmm. But it hasn't worked that way. The leveling out is we have gone down to the rest of the world's level. And then he has this graffiti picture and it says, we have become tribal. And it's really a touching moment. Well, one thing I know that I like, and I think a lot of your fans are probably very interested in knowing, is that they can actually see some of your paintings, which you've been doing for many years now, uh, prior to the concert. You're going to be displaying some of them? Uh, yeah, there's like only, a, I think there's a handful, you know. So many people have uh, have asked me about my paintings. and and. Um, they're really incredible. I went through all of them on your uh, website yesterday. Well, you have to remember that those paintings are all 12 foot, 16 foot. Oh, they're big. They're huge. Well, I actually came to New York uh, as a kid uh, to look at the New York Art Student League because I'd already got a, I've already graduated from college, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I could always draw and paint, and I wanted to find out how much it cost and how it worked and and at the same time, I'd been singing in rock bands uh, for a long time. Yeah. So I had a demo tape. So I dropped a demo tape off uh, at a manager's office. This is the long and short of it. You came to New York to, to become a, a big music star. But in reality, you were more interested in painting. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I became, I got a record deal uh, almost by accident. That's fantastic. Well, you know, it's, it's, I didn't really, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful that it yes. happened. And, uh. But it wasn't my main vocation. I really wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of those, uh, I saw myself as a young man, as very cavalier and, and, you know, starving, painting and suffering and all of that. And then I got a record deal and started suffering. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you translated that into your song because you really do give a voice to the people that don't have one. When, when did you realize that you first wanted to start writing songs that, that did just that? Well, in my career, you know, uh, which, you know, this story's been told a million times, but, um, uh, you know, I started off on a really bad foot uh, because I was signed, basically, because the guy thought I was, uh, I don't know, handsome, I guess. Uh, really wasn't looking at talent at all. Uh, he th you thought, fit the suit. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I looked the look and I had the accent and he thought that he had found, uh, uh, I don't know, Elvis Presley or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what the, who knows what the <laughs> he thought. Uh, so it really wasn't about music at all. It was all about cosmetics. Mm -hmm. and, and you know hype and stuff so I really got off on a bad foot so I knew that I had to if I was going to continue to to do that I had to have hit records mm -hmm. because nobody no critic was going to take me seriously so I had to have such big hit records that they had to had they had to deal with me whether they liked it or not mm. and I was fortunate enough to be able to write a few songs that were more than just pop songs and uh, and then fans kind of gave me this image that you keep talking about that I speak for them uh, it's nothing I you know I have to tell you I've never planned anything in my life save some time to dream cause your dream might save us up 